former party leader in Duncan Smith, who is with me now. Theresa May, it looks likely, will end up with a much longer extension to Article 50 than she wants, and presumably than you want as well. You know, I, obviously, we wait and see what the uh, council decides, but um, they've already pretty much indicated a long extension. The problem is she didn't get a vote for a long extension like that going on to the end of the year or the same time next year. Um, we have this night mayor of European elections in the midst of all this where you know the Prime Minister said endlessly we will not fight European elections you know all the time no deals better than a bad deal and yet we've got rid of any end stops at the moment so we could end up fighting European elections and then maybe two months later we would no longer be in the European Union so we'd have spent a hundred million pounds I think we are getting close to the point where the cabinet is going to have to make some choices about really where the Conservative Party in government is actually going and I think that is uh, pretty critical. So are you suggesting she could say tonight actually I won't accept a long extension and then we go without a deal and we leave on Friday or do you think that, that isn't possible especially as Parliament shown it won't accept? Yeah I think I think it is wholly proper and reasonable for the Prime Minister to say I asked you for a very specific extension that we want to fight the European elections that gives us just enough time to kind of resolve a few issues but if they say no you have to have a long extension with all sorts of caveats I think she has every right to say, but Parliament hasn't given me a mandate for that. I therefore cannot accept that. And if I accept that, I will be going against the will of Parliament. So I have to tell you, no, what I'm happy to do is to take some kind of adjusted process for the next month and two months or whatever while we get any deals through. But I'm not going to spend any longer, and we're certainly not going to fight any European elections. She has said that she's going to stand down if her deal yeah. goes through. And people are openly talking about the next leader of the Conservative Party. And that is the problem for her, isn't it? Do you think she should go sooner rather than later? Well, I do think, first of all, we all know the Prime Minister has agreed to go. I was in discussions with her. She's given a, a period for that. She's hinged it to the pass, passage or ratification of a deal. Uh, but I think the reality now is that that is becoming the firm date for departure, you know, the end of May, June, because to have a leadership contest in the, in the Conservative Party is going to take the better part of about, I would think, 10, 11 months, uh, weeks rather, and that will take you to the autumn. So this thing is going to have to happen. The question really is, how do we get through this process with an end stop in it? And the answer we're coming back to is, either we get a deal through or we leave without a deal, but with some other arrangement, you know, a period in which we have an involvement with them, you know, we we're happy to do all of that. There was an arrangement put forward like that. So leaving with no withdrawal agreement doesn't mean leaving without an agreement. And, and the European Union may well have to focus on that as being the best of what's left. Do you look now and think, we could have left a couple of weeks ago. We could have been out of the EU by now. And it hasn't happened, has it? And that has probably let down a lot of people who yeah. did vote for Brexit. I have to tell you, it's quite interesting. Um, up until the 29th of March, most constituents and most people that I met were kind of vaguely aware of what was going on. They knew there was turmoil here and all the rest of it. They didn't know the specific details of who voted for what, what was exactly on offer. The one thing they did know was that they were promised that we were leaving on the 29th of March. I have noticed since that date a real eruption of anger from people who have never really questioned me before on it. Why haven't we left? Because the date was very clear to them. And I think it's a lesson for all politicians. If you make a commitment like this, you have to really stick to it. And we should have told the European Union this was a commitment under Article 50. Either we leave on that date with an arrangement or without an arrangement. Because they have been utterly inflexible. And the problem is really theirs. Their inflexibility on the withdrawal agreement has meant that the backstop has killed any chance of the Prime Minister getting a deal through. Even now it's not too late. But if they play stupid games, and by the way, it's not me. Germany is saying that. The new elected head of the Christian Democratic Union has said, why aren't we negotiating alternative arrangements to get rid of the backstop? They're very, very critical of the Commission, so they're under the hatchet as well tonight. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Okay. Ian Duncan-Smith, thank you very much indeed. Sir.